Hello, welcome back to Urban X Files. My name is Keith, and today's subject is all about UFOs and specifically something that happened in the early 1900s and was a favorite episode of mine for the X Files. And this is the Tunguska explosion at 7 17 a.m. on the 30th of June in 1908. There was a massive explosion in the atmosphere five miles above Siberia. It left the forest underneath burnt and charred and had pushed trees in over a 20 mile radius. It threw people to the floor and broke window panes 50 miles away. And 100 miles away, witnesses have reported seeing the explosion create enormous black cloud of ash which was accompanied by a terrific roar. This deafening noise was even heard 300 miles away and all across the world scientific equipment had recorded the strange occurrences in North Russia. To this day, bizarre growth patterns have formed in plants and animal life and they can be found in this specific area nowhere else but what exactly happened in Tunguska on that day the nearest witnesses to the explosion were reindeer herders 25 miles from the blast blast center they were sleeping in their tents when a massive force blew them into the air one man was reported to have died and the others had lost consciousness. When they came around, they saw the forest around them devastated and smouldering. Other witnesses at the trading post had 50 miles south of the explosion had reported seeing the sky split into two, with the northern part covered in flames. And a blast that had washed over them was so hot that it felt as if their clothes were on fire. It threw them 20 feet into the air and when they regained their senses, a terrible crashing bang was followed by a noise which sounded like a downpour of small stones that were hitting the ground with some force. More distant witnesses had seen the phenomena's final impressive act approaching. Residents in two remote towns had seen a great ball of fire with an indiscent tail streaking across the morning sky like a comet would. Now, many thought it was the beginning of the great final apocalypse. The local newspaper, the Sibir, reported what was seen from the village of the uh, Nizhain Kerlinsk. It's pronounced, I don't know how to pronounce the Russian word of it, 200 miles away from the explosion. The peasants saw a body shining brightly with a bluish white light to it and it moved vertically downwards for about 10 minutes. The body was in the form of a pipe and the sky was cloudless except that low down on the horizon in the direction in which this growing body was observed. A small dark cloud was noticed. It was a hot and dry and when the shining body approached the ground it seemed to be pulverized. In its place a huge cloud of black smoke was formed and a loud crash, not like thunder, but it was it was similar to thunder and after this loud crash there were more fallen boulders and stones that fell from the sky and this devastated some of the villages and the area around it. All the buildings that were shook and at the same time uh, uh, a forked tongue of flame broke through the cloud and this old woman who wept, everyone thought that the end of the world was fast approaching. The Russian authorities were not able to send anyone to investigate the phenomena until March of 1927 when Leon did Kulik was chosen by the Soviet Academy of Sciences to find out what had actually happened in Tunguska on that day. As he arrived in the area and he noticed the lines of trees all knocked down 
radiating from a distant point. He took some photographs and he studied, studied the land around the Tunguska site, but he never found any fragments or any meteorite samples. It seemed that what had ever had crashed in Tunguska that day, the absence of any physical remains left in the Russians perplexed. They felt that only a massive rock from outer space could have caused these effects, but with no evidence. Following the dropping of the atomic bombs on Japan during the Second World War, photographs comparing the devastation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the area near the epicenter of Tunguska explosion displayed many similarities. A revision of eyewitness accounts also increased the possibility of Russian phenomena being a nuclear explosion. However, no nuclear weapons existed in 1908 and some people speculated that the blast was caused by an alien spacecraft that had crashed on Earth. Such an idea is now largely scoffed at and has been replaced with theories of antimatter or black hole imploding above Siberia. Our improved scientific knowledge has been able to deduce that explosion was the equivalent of a 40 megaton nuclear weapon. But man's ideas about what caused this amazing event, whether it involves UFOs or other intergalactic oddities requires an understanding of a subject that we still have not quite grasped. I would also like to point out that recently in 2021 we have had some strange things seen in the skies and these have brought, been brought to the attention of the public and it has also been admitted by the governments that they have encountered UFOs, but they have another term for it. These unidentified flying objects cannot be explained. They are in various shapes, whether they come in bits of light and make triangular patterns and the famous cigar shapes. We do not know what these are. Have we already had real visitors from other planets, whether they have crashed onto this Earth or whether they have landed and are involved with our governments? It sounds so crazy to think that aliens are on our planet without us knowing. Now, when you think about how much that would impact our day-to-day -day lives would be astronomical it would be life-changing now i think like i think it'd be it'd be a knock on some of the religions and what they um say is their way of life and 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 that not to not that i want to disassociate aliens and then obviously a spiritual way of god and and whatever it is you choose to believe in now i'm just rambling on but what i'm saying is that if we have evidence of aliens on this planet it opens up a whole new world of exploration because they will have obviously traveled from another planet and and made contact with us on this earth which is is it's ignorant to think that in the universe we are the only planet with life form on it. I find that quite, um, it's not, I just find it, the universe is too big because we've not even ex explored a fraction, a, a single percentage of the universe, it's that vast. And according to theorists, space theorists like Stephen Hawkins and things like that, the universe is ever increasing. So, as each day passes, it grows bigger and bigger and bigger. So, who's to say? It's strange, but it's cool at the same time. Hi, I've also, what I also plan to do soon as well, I've got a couple of people I know that who, who've personally experienced strange things in the sky, who I will interview and I will get their account of what they've seen and whether it's, find out what, their beliefs was beforehand what it felt like during the event and now what they believe in um, because I think that people who've never met and haven't any um, anything in common have very similar stories especially before the world of social media 
um, and the internet because obviously it wasn't as, as and information wasn't as readily available as it is today because we just pick up our phone and we can find out anything from anywhere in the world so it is pretty safe to say that these have got some solid stories anyway enough of me rambling on i hope you enjoyed this video when there's many more videos coming on aliens and outer space so stay tuned for them and if you've got any ideas or suggestions that you want to make please do get in touch right in the comments below because i do read and reply to every single comment and it is greatly appreciated so anyone who does take the time to do this i want to thank you personally so the regular commenters obviously thank you so much and take care and i will see you in the next video peace out